Welcome to New Life Fellowship, my brothers and sisters. Oh, this is a great, great day. Especially we sing the song, Breathe. This is the air I breathe. There was a song that, you know, when my wife and I got married, she was walking through the aisle, you know, and little kid, you know, throwing the flower and the song play, this is the air I breathe. I, you know, <laughs> it brought me to like 19 or 20 years back in uh, 2001, you know. So it's so precious. Uh, are you all doing okay this afternoon? Is it still afternoon or evening? It's, it's afternoon, right? <laughs> it's afternoon. It's good to be in church. It's good to worship God all together. You know, like uh, COVID is not going to be there forever. But God is always with us forever. Amen? Amen, then? Amen? Yes. So this week... Um, yeah, before I share, you know, uh, Pastor Jason and Pastor Angie, would you stand up, please? So they're going to be leaving us in February, right? Yeah, they are, you know, a, a pillar of New Life Fellowship. They bless this body, you know, greatly. And together with them, you know, I mean, and they, they build a great worship team and wrote so many songs. Will you give them a hand clap, you know? And so they're going to be leaving us in February. But don't forget to pray for them. They feel like it's time for them to receive a call back to the, the United States to help build the body of Christ over there as well. And so when they leave over here, we can rise up, right? Can help one another. I can rise up a little bit speaking English, you know, <laughs> speaking in English, you know, to, to you, to some people. So I believe that by the grace of God, God will help me. Do you all believe that? Yes. So today I'm going to talk about the local church. The local church is the fellowship of believers. The local church is the fellowship of believers. If this local church we don't meet, we cannot build one another. Cindy is here. She came to Cambodia in 1995, right? 1995. At that time, the church was so small. I think we have only like, what, seven people, 15 people, something like that. You know, we have seven to 15 people, not many people that get thing to know the Lord, experience the love of God. But as you see now, because the local church keep pushing and building one another up, the church get to grow to 311 churches across the nation of Cambodia. This is a wonderful thing. And many, many lives have been changed, have been transformed by the love of our Lord Jesus Christ. Because of the believers, they did not stop believing in the Lord Jesus Christ. But they continue to fellowship. They continue to build one another up. They continue to grow in the Lord God. I'm going to read from, just, just want to let you know as well, after we finish this uh, 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 series, we're going to send uh, people from this church to visit the provincial churches across the nation of Cambodia as well. We're going to take a trip. Could be, you know, one day trip. Could be one night trip or a couple night trips. And we go there, we want to bless the body of Christ as well. So you get ready, you know, for those who feel like, you know, your time is really, really crowded, really difficult, you might think about it, we will reveal the plan to you soon when we're going to take team to different places. So that's why we teach about local church. So the local church is the fellowship of believers. In Matthew chapter 18, verse 20, I'm going to read from New, Standard, uh, uh, New American Standard Bible, for where two or three have gathered together in my name. I am there in their midst. This is what Jesus said. If you are meeting together 
I'm there with you. What, 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 what's there for? I believe he's there to help us. He's there to teach us. He's there to coach us. God is presence everywhere. When you meet together in his name. So many great things happen. In the book of Acts chapter 2, verse 41 to 47. I'm going to read from NIV. Um, those who accepted his message, accepted Peter's message, were baptized, and about 3,000 were added to their number that day. Can you imagine one preaching? Preaching, preach the gospel. And after that, people were cut to the heart, and people said, what should I do? And people wanting to know Christ. Can you imagine if you are to go out to these countryside churches after you preach and you get to see something's happening? You know, we, uh, we do the church plan in Kampong Tom in 1999. So the reason that we go there, because there were some miracles over there. There's a brand new believer. She just got saved. And she said, if your God, she said, if your God had power, can your God have transformed? Can your God change my father's heart? Because my father is an alcoholic. He's a drunkard and he smokes cigarettes all the time. He's a naughty man. We said, of course, our God can. Guess what? We pray for her. One week later, she received a letter from her dad. Her dad said, come and see me. As you know, not many Cambodian people write letters and send to their kids. No. You know, my dad never write me a letter, you know, for many years that have, I have been in the city. My dad never did that. But this guy, after he got transformed by the power of God because she joined with us in Phnom Penh, she, she ran away from her dad because her dad was a bad man. She said, no, she can't believe it. Make a long story short, she said, I have to go see by myself. When she get to the village, she saw her dad is smiling. Her dad stopped smoking the cigarette. She said, what's going on? The Lord had transformed the man's life as we prayed for him. And a little later, one of her brothers, you know, got manifest by demons. And a lot of demons in there. And she got to command the demons, and the demon left. And people in the village were shocked. What did you learn from Phnom Penh? Share with us. Share with us. Share with us. We want to know what you know. Myself, Pastor Sotan, Pastor Pisset, you know, later on we get on a pickup truck and go visit a church over there. I mean, not a church, yet, a village over there. And we preach the gospel. In the middle of preaching, this one kid got convulsion <laughs> in the crowd. I was so nervous, scared. I don't know what to do. I never experienced that. But by the power of God, that we believe that God has power, we command the spirit that manifests in that boy to leave. Leave that boy. And the villagers were shocked. And everyone, more of them, wanting to know about the Lord God, wanting to know where did we receive this power from. And we get to start that church because of that miracle. See, after Peter preached, there were thousands of people give their life to the Lord. They devoted themselves to the apostles' teaching and to fellowship and to breaking of bread and a prayer. And everyone was filled with awe at many wonders and signs performed by the apostles. You know that you can pray and cast out demons in the name of the Lord God, Jesus Christ. The Lord Jesus Christ is a name above all names. Last week, I went to pray. I went to meet with somebody, talk to them, loving on them. In the middle of talking, the man stopped talking to me completely. What's going on? I thought we were in a conversation. He don't want to say anything. And I asked him, can you say Jesus? And the man, no. 
<laughs> something wrong when you cannot say Jesus. Can you say Jesus? Nope, he don't want to say it. Can you say Jesus? Nope. I spend many hours to pray for that gentleman. Make a long story short, finally, after many hours, I was tired, and that guy's tired, and finally, I prayed and I speak in tongues. Oftentimes, people don't believe in speaking in tongues. Speaking in tongues is it's another language. There was the gift by the Holy Spirit to the believers. So when I speak in tongues, the demons start to move. To be afraid of the tongues. So later on, the, the spirit in that person is getting weaker and weaker and weaker. Finally, the man say, just like that. This. And then later on, he said, Jesus. The man was completely almost like dead, tired, after it was manifest by the demons for so many hours. It's not my power, but it's a power that was given to me by the Lord God. You can do that as well. You can perform signs and wonders in the name of the Lord our God as well. That's why Jesus' name is a name above all names. Many wonders and signs performed by the apostles. All the believers were together. See, they come together again. Come together and had everything in common. They sold property and possessions give to anyone who had need. Can you imagine? Like, oh, I sell my house, I sell my land. I give it to you, I help you. Every day. They continue to meet together in the temple courts. They meet in the temple court. As you look at it, 3,000. It's going to be a lot of people. Well, the, the preacher must be have a hard time. <laughs> you know, how can he preach to 3,000 people? These people must bring their kids along as well. These people must bring their wives along as well. Could be like maybe, let's say, 7,000 or 8,000 or something like that. You know, thousands of people came. And they, I, think, I think they must be really, really, really quiet, paying attention to the word was preached by the apostle. Every day, they continue to meet together in the temple courts. They broke bread in their homes and ate together. They ate together with glad and sincere hearts, praising God and enjoying the favor of all the, of the other people. And the Lord added to their number daily those who were being saved. So point number one, the local church is a place of fellowship. Some people said, oh, I believe in Christ. I don't have to go to church. I just believe. I just believe. It's a place where they can fellowship. They fellowship in the temple's courts. They can fellowship in their home. Some, Sometimes, someday people are busy, but don't forget to meet in the temple's court. Don't forget to meet in the churches. And don't forget to meet in homes as well. In Romans 16.5, the apostle, say, uh, uh, apostle Paul said, Also greet the church that is in their house. So there must be churches in the houses everywhere. Greet um, Epanitus, uh, Epanitus, my beloved, who is the first convert to Christ from Asia. The Apostle, Paul, uh, the Apostle Paul greeting these people from a distance. People meet in the homes. So with this pandemic thing, it's important to pe for people to meet in home as well. Meet in home. Pray for one another at home. And all that in, in Colossians chapter 4, verse 14, greet the brethren who are in uh, Laodicea. And also uh, Nympha and the church that is in her house. So it's important. Sometimes 
you know, it's important to meet uh, in the home churches as well. If you have your house, if you have it available, you know, just open it up, invite other people to come and meet together. Now, I believe, I guarantee you, when you meet together, some great thing happen at that place. Some great thing happen. I believe that. So, local church is the place where people can fellowship. Point number two, life will be helped and protected in the local church fellowship. If you need help, go to church. Go to local church. They will help you. If you need encouragement, go to church. They will help you. Not many people get to do that. In uh, Proverbs 27, 17, iron sharpens iron. So one man sharpens another. When we meet in the local church, people sharpen people. People encourage the people. People pray for one another. People help meet the need of one another as well. In Acts chapter 243, everyone who fear, um, uh, everyone who was feared with awe at many wonders and signs performed by the apostle, all the believers were together and had everything in common. They sold property and possession to give to one another who had need. This is important. All of us have certain level of need and we want to meet that need. And the pastor alone cannot meet that need. Your family alone cannot meet that need. It takes, sometimes it takes a lot of people to meet that need. So it's important for the believers to remember, don't just look to the pastors, don't just look to the leader, look to one another, build one another up as well. I believe that God gave every one of us a level of gifts. We can build one another up. This church, we believe in iron, sharp and iron. We believe in making more disciples. As I said, now we have 311 churches across the nation of Cambodia. We're not satisfied. We want more people to be transformed, getting to know God, experience the love of God. Point number three, in the local church, life will be grown in the local church meeting. I guarantee life will be grown. We'll be grown in the local church. John 6, 3, when he got to the other side, he climbed a hill and sat down. Jesus got to the other side, climbed the hill and sat down, surrounded by his disciples. He sit down and teach his disciples. And after that, after he teach, he performed signs and wonders. Philip learned from Jesus, wow, we need to spend a lot of money to buy food. But Jesus can perform signs and wonders beyond you and I expectation, expected. Mark chapter 1 verse 35, in the early morning, while it was still dark, Jesus got up and left the house and went away to a, a saluted place and was praying there. Even though Jesus, he liked to meet with his father. He always find time, always find time to meet together with his father. You and I, if we want to grow in the Lord, if we want to grow to be a better person, always find someone to mentor us and learn from one another. When people meet together, young believers will grow 
to be mature in God. Children learn their great values in life. Spiritual gifts being revealed. You start to find out your spiritual, your spiritual gift need being man. His story being created together. Signs and wonders being performed. You start to see that you can do that as well. And the name of our Lord Jesus Christ is being famous. This is important that believers continue to meet with one another. At our church, we continue to teach classes, LG class, this class and that class. And this year, we focus on marriage and men as well. We encourage marriage to grow in their love toward one another. Men also, we teach the men to behave better, to be like Christ, to protect their family. So we have a lot to learn. So if you are interested, ask the information desk. We have all, you know, all kind of information about marriage, about men. We are launching this year as well. So if you want to be a part of that, don't hesitate to join. We have Khmer people. We have the international people that you know, speak uh, English as well. So we have a men fellowship in, uh, in uh, February 20 at the Amrat's farm. So in the morning, so if you are to, you know, um, can set aside some time for your men wanting to grow some more and want to have the relationship with other men, please mark in your calendar, you know, we'll meet over there. If you want to know more information, ask the information desk. And uh, point number four, many people will be blessed through the local church fellowship, non-believers will be blessed as well in Acts 2, 46, 47, every day. They continue to meet together in the temple court, courts. They broke bread in their homes and ate together with um, glad and sincere hearts, praising God and enjoying the favor of all the people. And the Lord added to their numbers daily do who being saved we want to see more people saved when we continue to meet we continue to grow we continue to learn new things and one neighbors by neighbors they're starting to come to know the Lord because they see that something that you got from God they don't have it they want to know some more can you imagine if you just a believer you don't need to go to church you don't need to grow in the Lord you don't need to grow in anything and one day your spirit will dry up and you just be like one of them that doesn't have hope, doesn't have, rela doesn't have any relationship with God. Or one, you meet together, you build up, you get stronger and stronger and stronger, you know, and they can see Christ in you. They see you, they see hope. They see you, they see encouragement. This, um, I finished with this one story. This one person was coming to the market and they go to the market, they hear one of our church members on the phone talking to someone, encouraging someone over the phone. When the person heard it, we so, so shocked, wow, that person is talking to someone over the phone. That person is so smart. I want to learn from that person. Where do they get the knowledge from, you know? Just the, the news spread when they hear you speak, when they see you behave, when they see signs and wonders. That's why many, many, many people being add, added to the body of Christ, added to church. That's why we have planned 311 churches. We aim to plan more churches as well this year. I believe after this mission year, there will be many, many people getting to know the Lord, have experience with the Lord God. Will you stand up? So let's pray and allow the Lord to touch you greatly as you go out to your home. That this meeting, not just a meeting, not just 
the word that I talk or anything like that. But let the Spirit of the Lord touch you greatly. When you go home, you are ready. Amen. When you go home, you're ready. If you see, if you meet the sick people, you just lay your hand on the sick people and expect healing. If you see people that manifest by demons, you just speak it. And the demon will, will leave that person. Do you all agree with that? Do you all believe with that? Let, let, let's let receive. Hallelujah. 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 Father, Lord, thank you, Lord God. Thank you, Lord God. Thank you that your presence is here with us. Lord God, I ask in the mighty name of the Lord Jesus Christ. Lord God, anoint your sons, anoint your daughters, Lord God, and get them equipped and get them ready, Lord God, as they leave this place, Lord God, feel them, Lord God, and Lord God, even use them like Peter, Lord God. Only the shadow of Peter, Lord God, heal so many sick people, Lord God. And use these sons, this daughter of yours, Lord God, to touch people out there. Lord God, because they receive and then they give, they receive freely and they give freely as well, Lord God. And Lord God, we expect to hear testimonies, Lord God, next week. Lord God, bless these people, anoint these people in the mighty name of the Lord Jesus Christ. Amen. Amen. Thank you. Thank you. If you want to...